Hello, it's Matthew here and we're looking at question 9, which is worth 50 marks. So we're shown two dimensions of Sean's shed, one which is the front face of the shed and then a 3D diagram of the entire shed. So let's start with part A and we're asked which of the following statements is most likely to be true and then we have to write down a possible height of Sean that would support this answer. So either the shed at the highest point is three times as high as Sean five times as high as Sean or eight times as high as Sean. So let's work it out. So the first thing is to find out what height is the shed at its highest point. So we can clearly see that the shed is at its highest point right here. So we have to work out how high above the ground that point is and we're told that it's 8.5 meters above the ground. So we have to work out if 8.5 is three times Sean's height, five times Sean's height or eight times Sean's height. Let's work out the various different possibilities and see which one is most likely. So we'll start with the shed at its highest point is three times as high as Sean. So to work out Sean's height, if it was three times as high as him, we would do 8.5 divided by three and that gives us 17 over six. And as a decimal, we can click S to D to get 2.83 or 2.8333 continuous. So we can write down Sean's height if it was three times as high, it would be 2.83 meters. Now let's see what his height would be if it was five times as high. So the same idea, except now we're dividing by five as it's five times higher than him. So once again, 8.5 divided by five this time, and that gives 17 over 10 or 1.7. And finally, we'll check how high Sean would be if it was eight times higher than him. So this time we're gonna divide by eight and that gives us 17 over 16 or 1.0625. So now we have to work out which of these is most likely to be Sean's height. So 2.83 meters, 1.7 meters, or 1.0625 meters. Well, if you know your own height, you can probably guess that it's gonna be closer to 1.7 meters compared with 1.0625 meters or 2.83 meters. Of course, Sean could be really tall, but I don't think anyone has ever been as tall as 2.83 meters and 1.0625 meters would be quite small. So Sean's height must be 1.7 meters. So therefore the shed at its highest point is five times as high as Sean. That is the most likely statement to be true. Of course, that does not mean that Sean is 1.7 meters. It just means of all the different possibilities, that's the most likely one as he's probably not as tall as 2.83 meters and probably not as small as 1.0625 meters. So that's our answer for part A and that was worth five marks. Now let's have a look at part B and he says this time that his shed has a capacity of over 1 million litres and now we're asked to work out the volume of Sean's shed showing that he is correct. As we're told at the start, the shape of Sean's shed is in the shape of a prism and to work out the volume of a prism, you have to get the area of the front of the prism, which in this case is the front face of the shed right here, and you multiply it by the length of the entire shed. And that will give you the volume of the prism, in this case, the shed. So the first thing I'm gonna do is work out the area of the face of the shed, which is the area of this face here. And in the 3D diagram, it's this area here. So if I get the area of that area that I've marked in yellow there, and multiply it by 18, that will give me the volume of the entire shed. So let's try and work out the area of this shape here. So I'm gonna break this up into two separate shapes. I'm going to break it up into a rectangle with a triangle on top. So I've marked out my rectangle in pink there, and I've marked out my triangle in yellow. So I'm gonna start by getting the area of the rectangle, and you may know, if you don't know, you might write this down, the area of a rectangle is given by the length by the width. So in our case here, we have the length by the width, which is seven multiplied by 12, and you can work that out to be 84 meters squared. So that's the area of the pink rectangle. So now we need to work out the area of the triangle, and the formula for the area of a triangle is given by half the base by the perpendicular height. And that upside down T there before the H means perpendicular. So that means the height must be exactly 90 degrees with the base. So let's go up to our triangle and work out our base and perpendicular height. So the height of the entire shed is from here to here and we're told that that's 8.5 meters. We also know that the height of just the rectangular part is seven meters. So that must mean the height of the triangle is 1.5 meters. And I got that from taking seven away from 8.5. So that's the height of the triangle. Now, I also know that the base of the triangle is 12 as the opposite side in the rectangle is 12 and opposite sides in a rectangle will always be equal. So my base is 12 and the height is 1.5. Now 
we have to figure out if it's the perpendicular height. And we can clearly see that it is perpendicular as it's straight up from the top of the triangle down to the base of the shed. So that means that my perpendicular height is indeed 1.5 meters. So now I'm gonna pop these into my formula. So half my base, which is half 12, by my perpendicular height, which is 1.5, so I get half 12 by 1.5, and that's going to give me 9 meters squared. So the area of my triangle, which I marked in yellow, is 9 meters squared. So that means the entire area of the front face of the shed is 84 meters squared for the rectangle and 9 meters squared for the triangle. So I'm going to add these together now to get the total area, and that's going to give me 93 meters squared. Now, remember, at the start of the question, I said that the volume is equal to the area of the face of the shed, times by the length. We've worked out the area of the face of the shed and that's 93 meters squared. So we have to multiply 93 by the length. So let's go up and see what the length of the shed is. And the length of the shed will be how far back it goes, which is this distance here. And we can clearly see that that's equal to 18 meters. So I'm going to multiply 93 by 18 to get my volume of the shed. And 93 by 18 gives me 1674. Now the units here are meters cubed, as so far all our units have been in meters and for volume you always cube whatever the units is, so in this case it's meters cubed. But it did want the answer in liters, as we have to prove that it's over 1 million liters, that the volume is over 1 million liters. So we're told that 1 meter cubed is equal to 1000 liters, so we just have to multiply our answer by 1000. So we can do 1674 by 1000. And that gives me 1,674,000. So the volume is 1,674,000 litres, which is obviously bigger than 1 million. So that's our answer for part B of the question, and that was worth 10 marks. Now let's have a look at part C. So here we're asked to use the Theorem of Pythagoras to find the distance D. So the Theorem of Pythagoras can only be used in right angled triangles. So let's try and mark out a right angled triangle that has D as a side. And this yellow triangle there is a right angled triangle with the right angle here. So the formula for Pythagoras' theorem is c squared equals to a squared plus b squared, where c is the side across from the 90 degrees. So in our case here, the side across from the 90 degrees will be in fact d, with a and b being the other two sides. It doesn't matter which side is a or which side is b, the only side that's important is you must have c as the side across from the 90 degrees. Before we mark in A and B, let's work out the base of this yellow triangle and the height. Now from the previous part of the question, we know that the height of the triangle is 1.5 meters and the base is 6 meters. As the entire base of the rectangle is 12 meters, so that yellow triangle, the base of it is half, the base of the rectangle essentially, so that means the base is 6 meters. So now my A is going to be 6 and my height 1.5 is going to be my B. It doesn't matter if you pick 6 to be B or 1.5 to be A. The only one, as I said, that's important is C must be D. So that gives me D squared is equal to 6 squared plus 1.5 squared. So let's do 6 squared and 1.5 squared now. So 6 squared is 36. And 1.5 squared is 9 over 4 or 2.25. So that gives us D squared is equal to 36 plus 2.25. So we have D squared equals 38.25. Now, we don't want d squared, we just want d. So to get rid of the squared on the left-hand side there, I'm going to square root the right-hand side. So think of the square root as the inverse of squared. So for example, if I have 4 and I square the 4, that equals to 16. And if I'm going to square root the 16, that's equal to 4, which brings me back to the 4 that I had at the start. So it's the inverse of the squared, or the opposite, if you like, of a squared is the square root. So you just have to bring the squared over as a square root. And that means d is equal to the square root of 38.25. And we can do this now. The square root button is just here on the second row and it's the second button in and now we can type in 38.25 and that gives me 3 root 17 over 2 or indeed 6.184658 but it wants the answer correct to one decimal place so correct to one decimal place this is 6.2 meters so the distance d there is 6.2 meters so that's my answer for part c of the question and that was worth 10 marks now let's have a look at part d and this is a question with enlargements. So we're told that it has center A and a scale factor of 3. So let's try and enlarge the diagram below using a scale factor of 3 with center A. If you're not familiar with scale factors and enlargements, I recommend following me along on the screen here and doing it either in your exam papers or in your copy, as I find with constructions, it's best to follow along what the person is doing on the screen. So the first thing to do, I'm gonna make it easier by labeling each of my points. So A is already marked in. I'm gonna mark this as B, C, D, 
and E. So if you aren't familiar with the scale factor and enlargements, what I have to do here is I have to increase each of those points. So for example, B, C, D and E, I have to increase their distance from A by three. So if you get your ruler, you should be able to measure the distance between A, B, A, C, A, D and A, E. So the distance from A to B should be roughly four centimeters and from A to E should be roughly 2.4 centimeters. So my distance from A to D, when I measure it, should be roughly 3.5 centimetres and A to C should be roughly 4.6 centimetres. So now what you have to do is you have to extend each of the lines from AB, AC, AD and AE. So let's do that now. So now that I've extended each of my lines from A to each of the four other points, I'm going to multiply each of the distances by 3 and then work that out and mark them in on the respective lines. So I'm going to start with the distance AB. So I'm going to find what 3 times 4 is and 4 by 3 is obviously 12. So I'm now going to mark in 12 centimeters from A and that's going to be my new point B or B star. So that's my new point B star there and now I have to do the same thing for C, D and E. So C was 4.6 centimeters so now it should be 13.8 centimeters in my new enlarged shape. So let's find my new point C star. So that's my new point C star right there. I'm going to do the same thing now for D and we'll do 3.5 by 3. That's equal to 10.5 centimeters. And this point here is my new point D star. Finally, I'll do the same thing but for E. So the distance from A to E was 2.4 centimeters. So now it will be 2.4 by 3, which is 7.2 centimeters. So this is my new point here, E star. So now once I have all my points, I can connect them with A and draw in my new shape. So there we have it. Now it's quite difficult to draw these enlargements on my screen here, but I trust that your one may be slightly more accurate than my one, but nevertheless, it should look something similar to that. And that part D there was worth 10 marks. And now let's have a look at the next part of the question. And this shows us the roof of a smaller shed. And we're asked to show that BC is equal to 4.6 meters. So the line BC is this line here. So we're asked to show that it's equal to 4.6 meters. So first of all, let's go to page 16 in our formula and tables book. That's the page with the formulas for trigonometry on it. So we have a few different formulas here. The area, sine rule, cosine rule, and also Pythagoras' theorem. In our triangle, we have an angle and two sides. So just for purposes of the example, I'm going to say that our angle is A and our two sides are C and B. And the side we're trying to find is A. A is the side directly across from the angle. So we have two sides and an angle. We're trying to find a third side. Let's see which formula that we might be able to use. So first of all, the area formula is no use to us as we don't know what the area is and we won't be able to work out what A is from that formula. So for the sine rule, to find one side, so remember small a and small b are the sides, capital A, capital B are the angles. So to find one of the sides, either A or B, that means you need two angles, capital A and capital B. In our case, we don't have two angles, we only have one, which means we can't use the sine rule. That leaves the cosine rule. So the cosine rule uses three sides, small a, small b and small c, and also an angle, capital A. So we do have the one angle to go in for capital A, and we also have two sides, b and c. A is the side across from the angle, and that's the side that we're trying to find. The important thing is that b and c are between the angle. So for example, if we look at our triangle up here, we have the angle A, which I've circled in pink, and then that's between the two sides, c and b. So let's use this cosine rule now and figure out what A is equal to. So in a trigonometry question where you have to use a formula, I always recommend writing in what small a, small b, small c are, and also capital A, capital B, and capital C for any angles you have. So the only angle we have here is the 30 degrees, so that must be my capital A. Now small b and small c are the two sides that that angle is between. So 30 degrees is between the side 3 meters and the side 7 meters. So that means 3 and 7 are going to be b and c. It makes no difference which is b and which is c. So I'm going to choose 3 to be b, and 7 to be C, and the side across from the angle, or the side opposite the angle I should say, which is going to be BC, is A. And it's very important that small a is opposite capital A, and then B and C are the two other sides. So I'm going to keep the side BC as A, I'm going to put in 3 for B, 7 for C, and 30 for capital A, and let's work out now what A, what small a I should say, the side BC is equal to. Now, I recommend doing the right hand side of this question in three different parts. So do three squared, then do seven squared, and then do minus two by three by seven by cos 30. So that will be a squared is equal to three squared, which is nine, plus seven squared, which is 49. 
and then we can do minus 2 by 3 cos 30 in the calculator. So first of all, make sure that your calculator is in degrees, as we have 30 degrees here. So to do that, click Shift, Setup, and then if you have this calculator, you can click 2 for angle unit, and then click 1 for degrees. And now you should see a D on top of your calculator, and that means degrees. If it says OR, it means it's in radians, and you need to change it. So let's put in minus 2 by 3 by 7 by cos 30. That's equal to minus 21 root 3. Now let's do 9 plus 49 minus 21 root 3. That's equal to 58 minus 21 root 3. Now we don't want a squared, which is what we have at the moment. We just want a. So to get rid of the squared, we're going to bring the squared over to the right hand side as a square root. As remember what I said earlier, the opposite of a squared is the square root. So that means a is going to be equal to the square root of 58 minus 21 root 3. So we can do this on our calculator. So it's going to be the square root of 58 minus 21 root 3. And that gives me 4.650476647. And I wanted the answer correct to two decimal places. That is indeed 4.65. So that means the length BC is equal to 4.65. And that's what we had to show. So that's our answer for E part 1. And that's worth 10 marks. Now let's have a look at the next part of the question. And this time we want to find the angle at C. Remember that the side BC is equal to 4.65 meters as we showed in E part 1. So now let's write in 4.65 meters for the side BC. And this is the angle here that we're trying to find, which I label C. So now this time we're trying to find an angle and we have three sides. So let's see which formula is easier to use this time, the sine rule or the cosine rule again. So going back to page 16, we can see that the sine rule, you have two sides and an angle to find another angle. Or for the cosine rule, you have three sides and you can find an angle A. So you can actually use either of these rules here. But in my opinion, if you can use either of them, use the sine rule, as that tends to be simpler and more straightforward. So we have two sides, A and B. We have an angle A, which means we'll only be left with one unknown, which is the angle capital B. So let's go back to our question now and fill in for small a, small b, capital A and capital B. So capital A will remain as 30 degrees and small a must be the side opposite the angle with capital A. So that means my small a will be 4.65 meters as that's directly opposite it. Then the angle I'm trying to find is going to be capital C, which I will label as my angle B for the formula. And then the side opposite the angle capital B must be small b. So in this case, that's three meters. So I have capital A, capital B, small a and small b. So let's use that in our formula now. So it's a over sine a is equal to b over sine b. So as I said above, small a is going to be 4.65. Capital A is going to be 30, so it's going to be sine 30. That's going to be equal to small b, which is 3, over sine b, which is going to be sine c, essentially. And now we have to figure out what the angle c is equal to. So first thing I'm going to do is do cross multiplication. So when you have two fractions equal to each other, you can just cross multiply. So that means doing 4.65 by sine c and 3 by sine 30. And then you can equate both of these. Now, of course, I don't want 4.65 sine c. I just want to be left with c. Now, I can't really get rid of the trigonometric ratio sine on the left-hand side just yet, but I can get rid of the 4.65 by dividing both sides by 4.65. So 4.65 sine c divided by 4.65 will leave me with sine c, as the 4.65 will cancel with the 4.65. That gives me sine c equals 3 sine 30 divided by 4.65. So in other words, 3 sine 30 over 4.65. And we can work this out on the calculator now. Again, make sure it's in degrees. So click fraction and then do 3 sine 30 over 4.65. And you should get 10 over 31. So therefore, sine C is equal to 10 over 31. Now you don't want sine C. I just want the angle C. So to find an angle when you have it in a ratio, so either sine, cos or tan, you can just invert the ratio. So in this case, it'll be sine inverse on the other side. So that means C will be equal to sine inverse of 10 over 31. And you can get sine inverse by clicking shift and then sine, and then we can do sine inverse of 10 over 31. And that's equal to 18.81906337. So to the nearest degree, that's going to be equal to 19 degrees. So there's our answer. The angle C is equal to 19 degrees. So that's the answer for E part two, which was worth five marks. That's the final part of the question and the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope I helped.